Drug abusers deserve treatment, not punishment. In a 2007 study by National Drug Intelligence Center, the NDIC, they estimated that the cost to society for drug-related crimes, meaning the money that we spend as a society to be, to be able to put people through the criminal justice system, is $113 billion. Now, there is a huge stigma around drug abuse. And it comes from the general public and even healthcare workers, the ones who help these people. And that stigma is that it's the user's fault that they have a moral weakness or even flawed character. Now, you may agree with this right now. You may agree that it is their fault, that they should stay in prison, or that they may not even be worth reforming. But there have been multiple studies from national institutions that have shown that this is wrong. And from the director of the NDIC, Dr. Velcro, she has mentioned that medicine long ago already decided and concluded that addiction is actually a complex brain disorder with behavioral components. Now, related to drugs, it's referred to as substance use disorder. So let's take a look at the brain scans on the left of the screen. So for a non-drug user, that is what their brain looks like. Directly below it is a drug abuser or a substance use disorder person. So as you can tell, there are quite a few differences. Parts of the brain do not work properly for someone who has substance use disorder. That means that judgments, decision-making, learning, and memory are all impaired. And it may actually be hard for them to even control their own behavior. So let's take another look at a scan. This one is glucose metabolism between a healthy, normal brain and a cocaine-addicted brain. So, as you can tell from the middle picture, the cocaine abuser is 10 days of abstinence, meaning they haven't used in 10 days. Now, they hardly have the same functioning as the normal healthy brain. So let's say we took that person and went ahead and put them in jail or in prison for a little over three months. Even doing that, with 100 days of abstinence, they still don't have half the functioning of a normal brain. So that goes to prove that forced abstinence, meaning locking someone up in prison, is not treatment. So treatment should start with a more therapeutic approach. Therapeutic therapy used in the prison system and outside of the prison system is a great way to start. It allows people to get motivated to change and better themselves. It gives them the ability to alter the attitudes and behaviors behind supporting drug abuse. Now, when you combine that with community-based treatment, that gives them plenty of support. And another study by the NDIC has proven that community-based treatment has helped a lot. Those who participate have committed fewer crimes than those who did not. So this helps with reintegration into society, meaning being able to hold a stable job and have housing. So let's look at the prison population. NDIC has concluded that 85% of the prison population has active substance use disorder or drug-related crimes. Now, the cost of treatment for just that population alone is 14.6 billion. Of course, that sounds like a huge number, but that includes full healthcare, any hospitalizations, and the specialty treatment programs that I just previously talked about and more. Now, when you compare that to $113 billion just to even put them in prison, I'd say that's a pretty good fraction less. So even if you still have the stigma that it's the user's fault, that they have moral weakness or flawed character, I think that we can all agree together that it is cheaper to give them treatment. It is more cost efficient to treat someone than it is to just throw them away in jail or prison. So. Let's go ahead and put that research into percentages. It cost America, our society, you and me, 87% more money to just punish each other than it does to support each other. So what I'm saying right now is I am willing to be compassionate. I am willing to be advantageous. I am willing to allow these people to reform for the betterment of our society. So I guess the only question left is, are you willing to do the same for your fellow Americans?